Hello and welcome to Coding TensorFlow, a series of videos where we focus on techniques for coding machine learning and artificial intelligence. I'm Martin Abuinis, a product manager from Google. In this episode, we will work through an example of how to use JavaScript for machine learning in the browser. This is achieved using TensorFlow.js, a JavaScript library for training and deploying ML models in the browser and on Node.js. There's lots of great information about this on the js.tensorflow.org site, including samples, API docs, and frequently asked questions. Today, in this first episode, I'll show you how quick and easy it is to write the code, train, and run a very simple model that executes entirely in the browser. And in the episodes that follow, we look at setting up a node environment and running more complex examples in that environment. Ready to go? Okay, let's do this. Let's first create the simplest web page imaginable. It's empty, but for one div, and we'll even leave that empty too. The next thing to do, of course, is to add the TensorFlow JS libraries. These libraries can be specified using the script tag. I'll put that here. Always be sure to use the latest version, which you can find at this link. Be sure to put the script loader in your head tag is shown here. Awesome. You now have your page set up for TensorFlow. So let's now show a relatively simple, but at the same time powerful example of how it can work. The goal of machine learning is to learn a model automatically by training on input data. The resulting model that is generated can then be used to infer or predict output data for future input values. For example, let's look at these data points. Now you can see it's pretty obvious by looking at this plot that there's a linear relationship in this data. The data points in this plot can be joined by a straight line. With this line, even though I don't know what the y value is when x is 5, I can see the y value on the line by looking up from 5 on the x axis. In machine learning, we infer this relationship by training a model on the input data that we have. Let's look at some example code to do this. In order to get this started, I'm going to create a new script block and within that I'll create an asynchronous function called learn linear. It's asynchronous because the learning will take some time, so it's good to get into the habit of waiting for learning to finish. First, I'm going to add a model. I'm using a TF sequential where the outputs of one layer are the inputs to the next. It's a simple stack of layers with no branching or skipping. I will then add a dense layer to this. Dense is where all of the nodes in each of the layers are connected to each other. In this case, it's a little redundant as I only have one layer and one node, but it's the easiest way to define this for a simple neural network like this. Now that my model is defined, it's time to compile it. To do this, I have to specify some parameters, including the loss function and the optimizer. I'm setting the loss function to be the mean squared error, a pretty standard one, particularly for linear equations. And the optimizer will be set to SGD, which stands for stochastic gradient descent. This simply defines a methodology for the learning. There are a bunch of them supported, including SGD and the popular Atom. If you would like to learn more about optimizers and the functions, be sure to take a look at the training optimizers section of the API documentation. For the next step, I'll define my X values and the corresponding Y values for the line. Remember the graph from earlier? Let's take a look at the points on that graph. You can see I've labeled the points here with the X and Y coordinates. In order to represent this as a machine learning computation, we structure the network to make the X values to be our inputs and have our Y values be our desired outputs. With this network structure, in the future, if we feed in a new X value, we get the corresponding Y value back. To train a model to do this, we can create two tensors for the training values. One tensor will represent the Xs and the other represents the Ys. Let's see how this works in code. I'll create a tensor for the x's by using tf.tensor2d. You'll see that the first element in this is my array of x values, minus 1, 0, 1, etc. The second parameter is the shape of this array, 6 rows, 1 column. I'll then do the same for my y's, giving my y values and the shape, 6 rows, 1 column. Given this, now all you have to do is train this model. This can take some time for complex models but fortunately, it will be really quick for this one. Either way, because it takes an indeterminate time, you will await its execution in order to know when the model is ready. The need to wait here is why you made this function be asynchronous to begin with. Back to the code. 
To train a model for a fixed number of iterations, known as epics, you call the fit function. Here you can see I'm telling it my input values, the x's, my output values, the y's, and then asking it to train for 250 iterations. After waiting for the model training to complete, we now try to do predictions from it. So, if you're good at math and can infer this function, you'll see that the relationship between x and y is y equals to x minus 1. Thus, the associated value for an x value of 5 should be a value of 9. To get the value, you use the model.predict method to get a prediction. Let's see that in action. I'll refer to the div called output underscore field that I created earlier and load the results of the prediction into its inner text. To do this, I call model.predict and pass my input tensor, which is a single value in a 1x1 array. TensorFlow will give me back the value, and you can see that it predicted 38.5, which is pretty close to the correct value of 39. If I refresh, the value changes to 38.3 because I've retrained the neural network. I can impact the accuracy by training for more epics, giving the network more time to error correct. Let's make it 500 epics, and when I refresh, we see my value is now 38.9, and a refresh keeps it there. Let's also see what it would predict for x equals 10. It gives us 18.97, where the correct value is 19. I refresh and retrain the network and get 18.98. And that's it. With this code, you've just created a neural network using JavaScript in the browser and trained it to predict a linear relationship. This was made possible by using TensorFlow.js. In the next episode of the series, you'll learn a little about data science, which enables you to use scientific methods, processes, algorithms, and systems to extract knowledge and insights from data. You'll get experience with data science in the process of building a simple classifier for TensorFlow, which will also run completely within the browser. You can learn about TensorFlow.js and other stuff on TensorFlow.org. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more great videos on this channel.